very pleasant evening to you out there. Thank you for joining us on another edition of the program National Talk on Equa Television International. My name is Joyce Jakada. Tonight on National Talk, we are beaming our light on the appeal court judgment as well as considering the legal and political implication of the ruling. You will recall that on Sunday, the Court of Appeal sitting in Abuja nullified the electoral victory of Plateau State Governor Barrister Caleb Mutfang of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, after stating he wasn't qualified to participate in the election, setting aside the ruling of the election petition tribunal, which had earlier affirmed Mutfang's election. The three-member panel headed by Justice Afreda Williams Dawudu said Mutfang was sponsored by party without structure citing a Plateau State High Court decision which has previously dissolved the leadership of the PDP in the state. The court declared Dr. Nantawe Yiwada Koshwe of the All Progressive Congress, APC, as the duly elected governor of Plateau State. Governor Caleb Mutfan, while reacting to the Court of Appeal judgment, called it a temporary setback, saying it would not distract him from repositioning the state on the path of unity, peace, and progress, and heads to the Supreme Court. The case in Plateau State is one that has generated a lot of reactions as the number one citizen of the state, talking about Barrister Caleb Mutfang, is being sacked by the appeal court. Joining me to discuss this issue and more is Barrister Longji Zakari. Good evening and welcome to National Talk. Good evening. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for creating time to be with us tonight. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, let's go straight into the discussion. The, the news on Sunday about the sacking of the number one citizen of uh, Plateau State, talking about Governor Caleb Mutfuang, has actually generated a lot of reaction. Some people pointed out to the variation, especially in the judgment being passed by the appeal court, more like um, same issue but different strokes. A lot of people cited the, the, the case in um, Lagos State, and people, some people are pining that maybe he will pays the piper dictates the tune, but of course you cannot uh, impugn on the integrity of the judiciary. A lot of issues have been um, coming up due to that um, judgment. But I would like to get your reaction on the appeal court um, judgment. You will recall that the election petition tribunal here on Plateau affirmed the election of um, Governor Caleb uh, Mutfang, but the appeal court is um, notifying that victory. What, what do you make of this appeal court judgment? Is this something that you saw coming or probably is, is you have different opinion about that? Well, um, sincerely speaking, mm. I must say that we didn't see it coming. Mm. Personally, I didn't see it coming at all. Mm. Uh, you remember that um, the tribunal here mm. uh, decided that um, the issue that has to do with the sponsorship and nomination of uh, Caleb Mutfang as the candidate of the People's Democratic Party Mm. was uh, purely an, a pre-election matter mm. and that uh, <coughs> it was uh, not the proper quorum mm. to have entertained the matter that the petitioners would have gone to the high court, the federal high court as it were, to challenge that there. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately as it were, mm. depending on which side of the divide you stand, mm. The Court of Appeal has made a finding. Mm. And um, sincerely speaking, I must say that it does appear that when the petition or when this issue got to the Court of Appeal, the whole issue changed. Mm. And then instead of uh, looking at the issue of nomination, mm. I think the petitioners relied more on sponsorship. Mm. Because uh, the issue of nomination, strictly speaking, is a party mm. affair and is a pre-election matter. Mm. And so when they were able to rely solidly on the issue of sponsorship, mm. which uh, is a constitutional matter, mm. uh, the Court of Appeal agreed with them. Mm. And that's why today we are where we are mm. by the judgment of the Court of Appeal. Mm. 
You know, my, my attention has been drawn to this issue of pre-election matter because a lot of people have banked on that. Oh, this is just a pre-election matter and it should be uh, within the party. And earlier on, I was talking about the variation that some citizens have pointed out to. Why is it that, in fact, some people were even um, mentioning the case of um, the vice president, Kashim yes. Shatima, yes. that such issue was raised, but it was uh, based on the judgment that was passed. This was a party affair and then um, the the, 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 those that appeal were told you don't have any um, case here yes. and it was dismissed and on the case in the case of Plateau State now it, like I said it, it, this seems very controversial it, it seems that there are a lot of interest in it and drawing to the fact that about seven um, lawmakers were sacked as well the same issue, issue of structure, issue of sponsorship. Like you rightly said, a lot of people have been talking about, oh, if it's nomination, it should be a party affair. Yeah. It should just be um, pre-election issue. Yeah, Why so. are we bringing... So, but I just wanted to clarify this fact. And are we supposed to be having pre-election issues after elections? Should we see some of these cases coming back? Well, well <laughs> sincerely speaking, I, I must say that um, this... Uh, period mm. of election and election cases has really introduced a lot of new things mm. into our jurisprudence as lawyers. Mm. Uh, it is not only peculiar to Plateau State, mm. you know, this issue of pre-election matters mm. going into to the tribunal and then decisions are taken on those uh, issues. Uh, let me give you an example of Kano State. Mm. If you look at Kano, the Court of Appeal in the issue of Kano held that the governor or the present governor of Kano, mm. who belongs to the NMPP, mm. was not even a member of the party. Mm. Now, then you ask the, yourself the question whether the issue of membership of party mm. and party registration, whether it is not an internal party affair. Mm. If a party puts forward a candidate and says, this is our candidate mm. for this election, is it the duty of the court mm. to go into their records, to say, we want to look into the records mm. and to see whether you were actually a member of the party mm. or not? Mm. These are issues that are within mm. the party cycle. Mm. But today, we have had the Court of Appeal confirm mm. or affirm the decision of the tribunal mm. and then even act by saying that the governor-elect is not even a member of the political party that sponsored him. Mm. You know, so these are issues. So the issue of nomination or pre-election matters, matters that for many people and mm. for lawyers, uh, it is actually not for the tribunals to determine. Mm. They have come to the tribunal and then they have become the basis mm. for the decision of most of the tribunals. Mm. And today we have seen the Court of Appeal affirming those decisions mm. and even taking step further to go deep into some of the issues that ordinarily precedent has said the court cannot even look into because mm. issues of mm. political party activities mm. the law is settled about that mm. that the courts do not even have the jurisdiction to look into those matters mm. except if they border on constitution or a breach of the party guidelines or the party uh, bylaws or their laws. Mm. But today we have seen it come up and then it has become the basis mm. for decision. Today we are in Plato. Mm. We are talking of who nominated, who, whether the party has structure. Mm. Many of us are even confused mm. as to whether the issue of structure is a ground for challenging mm. the election of a person in Nigeria. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm mm. really concerned about the Ele Electoral Act because yes. there are grounds at which you yes, can sir. disqualify yes. uh, 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 candidates. Yeah. So do you think that this issue of structure, this issue of nomination and sponsorship, like is it obtained in the Electoral Act? Is it a ground like enough? Is it a reason for one's victory to be nullified? Certainly, in my own opinion, it is not. Mm. Uh, and I'm saying this on the background mm. of the decision of the Court of Appeal mm. in Article Obi's case against INEC, mm. where the candidature of uh, Kashim Shatima, the, the vice president of Nigeria, was challenged. Mm. 
The Court of Appeal said, no, we cannot look into that matter. Mm -hmm. The issue of whether he was nominated, he had double nomination. Mm -hmm. And the court said they will not even look into the matter at mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. because it is an issue that should, be, should have been left for the Federal High Court. Mm -hmm. That is a pre-election matter. Mm -hmm. That position was affirmed at the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So for some of us, we are wondering why the nomination, the issue of nomination mm -hmm. of candidates of other political parties mm -hmm. uh, will be looked into. Mm -hmm. In the plateau scenario, it, it's quite unfortunate because there are quite a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. The court did not just only look into the issue of nomination. Mm -hmm. or, but, but, but we heard the Court of Appeal saying that PDP was in disobedience mm -hmm. uh, to court orders. Mm -hmm that was made by the Plateau State High Court. So should disobedience to court exactly. be a ground these for are this issues. These are issues that we're asking. A victory. If you look at the Electoral Act, mm. disobedience to court order is not a ground for non nullifying an election. Mm. It is not. In fact, the Election Petition Tribunal is not the proper quorum for complaints mm. of disobedience. Mm. There was a court that made that order you would have gone back to the court mm. to go and complain that, look, the order you made, these people have not complied fully with that order. Mm. However, we have seen it at the election petition tribunal. Mm. And don't forget that the election petition tribunal or election petitions are generally sui generis. Mm. They have specific mm. procedure mm. for prosecuting them. And that is why even under the electoral act, there are grounds for challenging elections. One of them is not structure. Mm -hmm. One of them is not also the issue of disobedience to court order. Mm -hmm. But of course, today, mm -hmm. we have heard the Court of Appeal said PDP disobeyed court order, and for that purpose, mm -hmm. they notified an election. Mm -hmm. So we are looking forward to seeing what the Supreme Court will say about that. Well, uh, well the, the, the road does not end at the appeal court. Like you rightly said, um, Barrister Caleb Mutfang, the governor of Plateau State, uh, has already headed um, to the Supreme Court. And of course, that is when the, the, the final, the clarification is going to be done because a lot of people have been concerned about the interpretation of our law. Yes. You know, before now, there was almost a campaign about all eyes are on the judiciary. Yes. After the election, a lot of people are, are talking about, oh, they've lost confidence in the system. And it looks like it is just the law. Yes. It is just the judiciary that they are, they are really looking at to do the needful. Yes. That way, they can have confidence in the system. Yes. But with this variation that have been happening, in, in the uh, different courts of appeal, cut across different states, it, it has really um, generated a lot of reactions. And shortly, we'll be going uh, playing some clips from um, the Vox Pop we had earlier on from some of the citizens, especially here on the plateau. Democracy is said to be the theory that the common people actually yes. know what they want yes. and they deserve to get it real good. But are you concerned that today it is the courts that is deciding? who wins or who whose victory is affirmed or whose victory <coughs> is nullified. Having known that we, we have a system that is existing and we, we, we say we are practicing democracy. In other climes, you see that when election is being conducted, in fact, it is the media that announces it because they are, they are, they are actually everywhere. Yes. As the result is being um, and, um, collated, as yes. voting is taking place, they are reporting it real time. Yes. And the first people that announce it is the media. But in this climate, we keep going back and forth, back and forth like election took place eight months ago mm -hmm. but we are still in court going in and out of court and it, it looks like i'm just concerned about the effect on yes. even the people yes. and even the, the the issue of voter party you know how that before the election we kept emphasizing on the issue of voter party encouraging people to go out there and vote yes. and it looks like now it is no longer them that will decide yes. but it is the court that is deciding and the variation has been an issue of concern but yes. Should the courts be the one to decide who wins an election? Well, unfortunately, I must say um, uh, it, 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 it's quite disheartening mm. that we have found ourselves in this situation where the courts mm. have had to decide even against the will of the people. Mm. Uh, a couple of colleagues and neighbors have confronted me and have asked me mm. why uh, people will come out in their numbers mm. to vote for a can particular candidate mm. and then the courts will uh, decide otherwise. Mm -hmm. Now, there is no explanation you will give mm. 
to a common man on the street true, true. that he will understand the integrity mm. or the technicality mm. that was used, you know, or that uh, came about mm. the declaration of a person who didn't win at the polls, mm. you know, as the winner of the election. And today mm. he has uh, been returned elected. Mm. So it is quite unfortunate. Mm. But you see, um, uh, but before, before I digress, let me mm. see that um, it's not helping us. Mm. It's not. Because the, the feelers we are getting is that a lot of people are becoming discouraged mm. and um, this might lead to voter apathy. Mm. Because uh, for some people, they feel, what's the point going out to vote on the day of election mm. if at the end, uh, according to them, let me use their words, three people will just sit down in a panel mm. and decide mm. that, look, out of the number of people that came out under the hot sun to vote for a particular candidate, mm. that that candidate is not the winner of that election. Mm. And so for some of them, they have been saying, well, let's allow the judges or the courts mm. to go and do the voting themselves. Mm. So that's why I say uh, it is not good for our democracy mm. and it is not good for our democratic process. Mm. Uh, having said that, um, I think we need to rework our electoral process. We cannot say that enough. Mm. We have seen the election, recent uh, off-cycle elections in the three states of Kogi, mm. uh, Imo, and Bayasa. Mm. And those elections are nothing to write home about. In fact, while we are shouting of the 2023 election, we saw the worst of True. in those when we are hoping cycle. that we we'll learn from the exactly errors from of the, the errors March, of the February, exactly March election and exactly you saw the kind of controversy True. that trailed mm -hmm. the outcome of that election, mm -hmm. and so when our electoral process is not clean enough, mm -hmm. people tend to dispute the result of that election. Mm -hmm. You give people the reasons to dispute that election. Liberia just had an election mm -hmm. recently, mm -hmm. and then. The, the, the sitting president lost the election and he conceded. Of course. And if you look at the process of their election, mm. it's seemingly clean. These are countries that Nigerians have it's helped. Exactly, in, in exactly, you know. So for those kind of elections that uh, you can see that the outcome of the election reflects the true mm. uh, decision of the people, mm -hmm. who wants to go to court to challenge that kind of election? Mm. So we need to work, rework our electoral process. Mm. We need to rework our electoral process mm. so that we can come up with a process mm. that is clean and acceptable to everyone. Mm. Once an election is conducted in a manner that is acceptable to everyone, mm. everybody accepts the result of the election. And we don't have to go to court mm -hmm. nor to give the ju judges or the court the jurisdiction or the powers to decide so, our fate. Mm. But when we don't do that, mm. of course, uh, the more controversial the election becomes, mm. the more reason people have to go to court, mm. and the more mm. we give the court opportunity mm. to decide our fate. Mm. So we must rework our electoral process. Mm. Uh, look, look at the cases of the appeal court. Most mm. of them, you had three-member panel, three-member yes. panel, and <laughs> they are deciding for well, <laughs> over 200 million people. Yes. Why? Because we refuse to learn from yes. our past mistakes. We refuse mm. to be transparent and accountability. It was on this platform that we kept emphasizing if the process is actually transparent, yes. if, if our leaders are accountable, if people can see that, yes, I was truly voted by mm. the people, and then they will celebrate victory. If the process that brings them to power is excellent, then you will see excellent excellence even in their leadership but when the process is is being when the people's vote is being robbed when the process is not transparent when we don't see accountability at the end of the day like you rightly said we keep going back and forth to court over eight months that the election took place we are still rolling in the courts look at now it, it's more like issue of governance has been set aside the people are currently suffering mm -hmm. we've been talking about the removal of first subsidy has brought about a lot of hardship what, what people have been talking about measures NLC have been going on strike yes. and like negotiating and all of that. Till today, the people are yet to even feel the impact yes. of all the measures that have been taken. And yet, we have been back and forth with issues of uh, um, election, while some people pre election, some cases pre election mm -hmm. issues that should have been dealt with long ago. And you know, at the end of the day, it's always unfortunate that the common man is yes. the one that suffers it all. Look at the case of um, Kano. Yes. About 165,000 votes. 
declared invalid. Why? Because the, it was not signed or it was not stamped. Whose fault is that? We did not even hear any case of any electoral I officer know. being sanctioned yes. or disciplined. Exactly. But votes were cancelled. People went out yeah. under the sun to vote for who they think will govern them well. But at the end of the day, because of one person's mistake, like who takes the blame in the in the whole... Nobody's even talking about INEC or uh, talking about any officer that is even at fault. But look at how um, votes are being cancelled. Votes are being declared invalid. People are not on, on the plateau, for example... We saw how protest was taking place yes. on, on, on the streets. Like, people are not happy that they went out, they voted, and then the court had to upturn on uh, the election or declare it, uh, nullify the election on the grounds of um, structure and other things. Even though some people have actually blamed the PDP. Yeah. I've had people say, oh, why didn't you fix your house? Yes. If you had fixed your house, yes. then we wouldn't have been on this stage. You will have win and you will have been facing issues of governance rather than yes. going back and forth in the court. Well, like, what do you make of even the issue of, because the, the three-member panel um, talk about that PDP was not, doesn't have the structure to actually sponsor a candidate. And they, they talk about the judgment by the Plateau State High Court yes. that actually dissolved the leadership yes. of the PDP, asking them to go and conduct congresses but yes. uh, according to the, the, the panel, PDP disobeyed that. Yes. And so the party that sponsored Caleb, there's actually no structure yes. in the party that sponsored Caleb Mutfa. It wasn't on the basis that the people did not vote him, yes. but it was more of the party not having structure. And this, this is the same issue that affected the seven yes. uh, um, lawmakers in the National Assembly. I yes. think even at the state's uh, yes. assembly too, yes. some members yes. have also been affected. Yes. Are you concerned about the party internal the internal affairs of yes, the pdp that yes. led to where they are today yes um i i i i, I am concerned mm. about um, internal democracy in our political parties mm. and um I, I think you know you know the primary uh the the, the beginning of all electoral process starts with the, from the party level mm. you know mm. so when you find a political party mm. that does not obey its own laws mm its own rules. These are some of the things you find. When PDP started having this problem, they went to the high court. It was an internal squabble between the uh, party members. Mm. They went to the high court and then the high court decided. But then, the most important thing to look at is how did they come about that problem? Mm. It's because somebody that is supposed to do something did not do that thing. Or he did it not the way he was supposed to have done it. Mm. You know, and that's why the High Court even found in the first place mm. that that Congress or the Congress they did was even wrong in the first place. Mm -hmm. So we are concerned that our political parties do not play according to their own rules. These are rules they have set up for themselves. Mm. Nobody set up those rules for them. Why won't you follow those rules and then play according to those rules? Mm. And so our political party must really rework their attitude. Because most of the, 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 the casualties or these kind of scenarios, when we had it in Zamfara, it was the same thing. Mm. APC had internal issues, and then the things peeled off, mm. and then it, it affected every other person. So parties must learn to work according to their own rules. They must work according to their own rules. Mm. If not, we keep having these issues. Today, we are not talking about whether Caleb Mutfan was voted by mm. the people or not. Mm. No, mm. that is not what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. We are talking about whether his party obeyed an order of court or not. Mm. And then secondly, our political parties, and I must say this with every sense of responsibility, and this does not only apply to political parties. You see, this country... We, we have, most of our leaders have adopted the attitude of lawlessness. Mm. People behave as if they are demigods. Mm. If not, one will wonder that if actually a high court said, go back and do this thing again, mm. why didn't the PDP do it as mm. expected? Mm. Now, they are arguing whether it is Congress across the local government, what zonal level, mm. or Congress in the state chapter alone. Mm. They are battling what? And then, you know, you give the room mm. for mischief to come in. If I'm your enemy, mm. and then you give me a window for mischief, I will utilize that window and then hurt you. Mm. Now, look at it now. Because of that window that they mm. gave, 
Today, they are crying. But but the for. PDP actually um, came out to say that the, they were they are actually they were cleared by the even I. I I agree <laughs> with you. I agree with you. But you see, um, if you look at the the the, the, the they presented they actually presented a report mm. of a pit congress, mm. and 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 it takes us back to the way these cases are decided. The Court of Appeal said, yes, we have seen the proof of compliance, mm. but that was not total compliance. Mm. What was the issue they had? Now, you have 17 local governments in Plateau State, and then the court said, go back and do repeat Congress. Mm. Assuming we are going to take that repeat Congress that you did for it, mm. how many local governments participated in that repeat Congress? Only five. The other 12 did not participate. And so they said, even though I have issues with the court, even looking at that, because for me at that level, it was bad enough that you had to look at whether there was compliance. Mm. Because at that level, it is not the duty of that court to look at the issue of compliance. But if you look at it and then there is proof of compliance, you shouldn't mm. look at the level of compliance mm. because that is not the job. So, but the reason, what I'm saying is that we must learn to obey court orders we must learn to play by the rules mm. so that it does not even give, because assuming PDP decided, okay, when the court said go and conduct, they conducted congresses across mm. all the 17 local governments. Wouldn't have been where we are today. Mm. Assuming PDP practice what we call internal democracy, mm. they wouldn't have gone back to court. In the first place, for the court to even order, cancel congresses and then order them to go and do a repeat congress. So we wouldn't have been where we are today. Mm. So we must learn to play by the rules. Mm. Well, it is very important that um, laws are being actually adhered to. I've, I've listened to even the opposition parties even citing Section 177 um, seven, seven, of the yes. 1999 Constitution. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Section C specifically that a person shall be qualified for election to the office of the governor of a state um, if he is a member of a political party and is being sponsored by that uh, um, party and, and now they are saying no we are not talking about nomination yes. the, the issue is actually sponsorship. Uh, sponsorship and you see yeah. when you when you always give rooms mm. for strategies the enemy like the, the opposition will always yes. find a way of um, coming in and all of that but like you, you rightly said earlier we shouldn't be seeing pre-election matters we yes. shouldn't be seeing issues that should have been dealt with like at the lower court coming up at the appeal court but this is not the final road the, yes. the governor like I said earlier on has already headed the Supreme Court and we await that particular judgment. But of, of more concern is the citizens, the people yes. that actually went out there, okay. take all the, 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 the pain to vote for who they think um, is, is capable of leading them and leading them well. But I would like to us to just hear from um, the citizens on the streets that we're actually interviewed. So let's go. I received the news with a shock because I... The way the verdict was announced, you know, really it didn't all go well to some of us. Why I said so? Because I know it's a candidate that I voted for. That is uh, the candidate of PDP. And uh, we believe uh, he scored the majority votes. And to our surprise, the, the verdict that the appeal court made, you know, it really surprised us. Because we didn't believe that such would happen. Because at the tribunal, he won his case at the tribunal. But uh, at the appeal court, they set aside the victory, of which affected most of us. Because we believe we voted him with all our heart. It's a candidate that we so believe on him. We trusted him that he's going to deliver the state. But to our surprise, it turned out to be something different, of which uh, we don't have anything to say than to just Maybe the way we see it. But honestly speaking, to my own, I'm not happy at all. I'm not happy with the Vatic. At all, at all, I'm not happy. I'm not happy with the Vatic. Because the reason they were giving, they're talking about uh, all this uh, issue of uh, the party has no structure. If the party has no structure, why did INEC allow him to, to, to contest as a candidate? At least, if, if there is no social, they could not allow him to, to be a candidate or his name to appear on the ballot paper on that day. But it's a surprise. I'm talking about uh, that the party has no structure. Well, we know the party has a structure. 
thought it's such, the, 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 the announcement, you know, was so much, you know, disheartening. Me as a person, I didn't sleep well that day. Yes, when I heard the announcement. I thought, that's how the body went. But we are not happy. And I know most of Platonians are not happy with the verdict. My point here is that the judgment of the, of the, of the, of the tribunal of Plato is okay. But the judgment of court appeal, I disagree with it. Because Caleb Murufan has won election by the mandate of people. People give him his own all mandate. And they have declared him as a governor of this state. Eh? They have declared him as a governor of this state. But I disagree with the court of appeal to affirm a Nataway. Nataway did not win election. So we, are, we, 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 we go for that now. We, 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 we will go to Supreme Court. That is the last court. We are waiting now. When we go to Supreme Court, we are waiting. After the, the judgment of the Supreme Court, then we will tell you what will happen. One thing I just want you to know is that the Nigeria we are now is not of the Nigeria we are before, whereby people are being trustworthy, they do their job based on trust. But this Nigeria now is a Nigeria that on, will you do your work based on your pocket. Because if not, this tribunal, I don't think that is supposed to go this way. Because in all this now, my question is, where is INEC? Where is the position of INEC? If INEC can certify a political party, to participate in some uh, electoral act. Now, who is the person now that challenging that they did not put their house in order? So if they did not put their house in order, how do they choose a leader? I'm not a politician, but you know, as a citizen of a nation, you have to see some certain things. Maybe those who are up there did not see it, I don't know, but it's just that even no matter how we talk, with uh, masses, our voice is not count. So there's no need of wasting our energy on talking, talking, talking. So only what we believe is that one day justice will come to this nation. And those who think that they are in power and the masses did not have a voice, then God will surely intervene. So that is it. Well, these are voices on the streets of Plato, people giving their own perspective on the appeal court judgment sacking Governor Caleb Muthwang of the PDP. And sadly, you, you, you heard what um, one of the uh, men there spoke, um, talking about um, them not having voices. Uh, it's really unfortunate. Like I said earlier on, we, we are in a democratic system, but some people will tell you it's like our leaders don't believe. Our system does not really consider that we are in a democratic um, process. But like you rightly say, when there are court orders, where there are laws that need to be followed, it should be. Another person there said, I like the ruling of the tribunal, but that of the appeal court <laughs> is actually a no for him. But I, I really do hope that um, the courts will gain the confidence of the people, even though some people are actually celebrating, some people are not happy. We are not talking about the number of votes right now, but it, it has to do with party affairs. Remember that in Kano, uh, there was already um, the appeal court passed judgment in Bauchi. Um, Governor Balas, Mohamed Balas' um, election was, uh, uh, was uh, affirmed as well, and then other states too ongoing well we, we do hope that the needful at the end of the day is going to be done like i always say my concern is the people and the implication of all this back and forth especially the issue of apathy that we've been trying to create awareness that people need to come out believe in the system come and cast their votes come and contribute their quarter to the development of, of the nation now let's look at the, the the some of the voices that are actually um speaking out concerning the appeal court judgment. Some people opine that, like I said earlier on, the PDP brought this upon herself, while others think that there's actually a deliberate plot um, to impose a one-party system in the state. And then others are asking questions about the variation in the judgment. Is, is our law different? Why, why are we um, seeing that same issues in this place, this is uh, a different stroke is given, the same issue in another place, a different stroke? Like, is our law different? 
Why, yep. And then these people that are saying, maybe there's deliberate plot. Because some people, like I said earlier on, are saying, oh, he who pays the piper is actually dictating the tune. Some people are saying, who are, who are even the pointing uh, to the uh, appointment of the Supreme Court judges? What are the processes and all of that? So are you concerned about the variation in the law and some of these concerns that people have raised? Well, um, we, we are all concerned. Mm -hmm. As citizens, we, we are concerned and um, we will not be comfortable having a one-party state, Nigeria become a one-party state. Uh, the reason is simple. Uh, that will erode the essence of democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, the essence of democracy is that you give people the leverage mm -hmm. of choosing which political party they want to uh, uh, vote for, which candidate they want to support, mm -hmm. you know. So when you have a one-party system... I think we have a caller. Sorry to okay. you. Hello, good evening. Maybe you do well to call us back. Our phone lines are now open. You can do well to add your voice to the conversation. We're talking about the appeal court judgment. How did it come to you? Is this something you expected or it's actually against um, what you think should have been the case? And Barrister Longji Zakari has actually been giving his perspective and analysis on that. So please go ahead. So um, we, we, the having of one party system is not in the best interest of this country. Mm. And uh, I'm not surprised that people are sharing concerns mm. about uh, the way and manner the judgments are coming in mm. and their fears of this country uh, becoming a one party state. And um, I understand, you know, in the recent past or in few days, a uh, few past days, almost three opposition governors have been uh, uh, removed from their seats. Mm -hmm. Their elections have been upturned. Mm -hmm. you, you remember the governor of Zamfara, True. whose election was upturned. Mm -hmm. The governor of Kano, mm -hmm. whose uh, mm -hmm. election was also upturned. Mm -hmm. And then affirmed that the Court of Appeal then look at Plateau State Governor now has mm -hmm. joined mm -hmm. the queue. Mm -hmm. um, but w somebody said something in the uh, live section mm -hmm. uh, that we had. He said, where is INEC? Mm -hmm. It does appear that in the whole of this controversy, or mm -hmm. this, the, the whole of this whole thing, INEC seem to be quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I must say mm. that INEC is in the center of everything. Mm. No, look at the case of Kanu. Exactly. 165,000. For no reason. <laughs> now, to, to worsen matters, look at Zanfara. Mm -hmm. Why did the Court of Appeal obtain the election mm -hmm. of the governor of Zanfara? They said that the results that were used for the purpose of that declaration mm -hmm. were results gotten from IREF. Mm. And then you wonder, is IREF not part of the uh, 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 structure mm -hmm. that has been set up by INEC for the purpose of conduct of election. Mm -hmm. But you know what the court said? Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. because IRF is a viewing portal mm -hmm. for the public, it cannot be relied Hello, on good morning. for the good purpose of the election. I think we have a caller. Sorry to cut Hello. You. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. Uh, good evening. Network, uh, My name is Femet. I'm calling for the Republic. Do well to call us. We like to I'm watching you, Mass and Direct. Our problem in our now, country. When you is say up. IRF is a public viewing portal, mm. I don't understand. Are the public supposed to view what is different from the original results mm. of the elections? Mm. Now, these are issues that you continue, it, it continues to baffle you. Mm. And then the Court of Appeal said, look, because those results were from the IRF viewing portal, mm. that those results, they canceled the result mm. and then said the election is inconclusive. Mm. Now, whose fault is it mm. that INEC used election results from their own viewing portal? Is it my fault mm. as a citizen mm. or is it uh, the PDP candidate's vote mm. as a PDP candidate? Mm. Whose vote fault is it? Mm. Now, the same thing happened in Kano. Because somebody did not stamp, sign, or date ballot papers. Those ballot papers were cancelled. And then you'll be shocked to know that 
it does appear that the ballot papers that were cancelled were did not the cancellation did not affect the ballot papers of the other candidate who was eventually declared the winner of that election so does that mean that if you come to a polling unit INEC specifically selected invalid ballot papers and gave to the opposition to vote so that it will be cancelled at the tribunal or at the courts these are questions that people are asking and then because of some of these issues it tends to appear to people that there is a deliberate attempt mm. to bring down the opposition in this country. Mm. Well, well Bar Bar Barista, mm. I, I would like us to look at the implications mm. of, of all these yes. happenings. Like yes. I said earlier on, eight months after elections, yes. we are still going back and forth. People mm. are expressing dissatisfaction with the process. INEC not even taking responsibility, just being quiet mm. and all of that. Mm. Even though the governor of Plateau State has headed the Supreme Court, yes. you know, uh, we're, we're looking at the implications of all of this happening. Yes. As we speak right now, the Speaker of the Plateau State House of Assembly has actually resigned. Yes. From, and he's a PDP member, yes. and a lot of people are speculating that it has to do with the exactly. problem that the yes. party is already facing. Yes. And people are also speculating that s some other members would tour the same path. You will recall that at the tribunal, some of the members of the Plateau State House of Assembly were also affected yes. in, 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 in the issue of structure, uh, sponsorship, and all of that. <laughs> Let's talk about the political implication as well as the legal implications of all of this. Well, the political implication is that uh, we're going to have a situation where people will lose confidence in the political process mm. and uh, will begin to experience voter apathy. Let me give you an example. Mm. I was going to the office yesterday mm. and right behind me somebody's two people were conversing mm. and I overheard them. Just like I said, mm. they were of the opinion that ah, why would people come out to vote in their numbers mm. and then a few other people will go and decide their own fate. Mm. You know? So for many people they will just feel that look, our vote amounts to nothing. After all, at the end somebody somewhere will just sit decide. down and then cancel all those votes. Mm. 165,000 votes. In fact, I saw a post on social media by, by an individual that says there's no point going to vote. Exactly. The court should just decide These or the government of the day should just decide that there's no need for that's election. The ban, that's the bandwagon mm. effect of mm. what is happening. Mm. You know, um, I, I personally would have expected that these decisions would also consider the feelings of the people. It will, it will also consider the, 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 the way Nigerians will feel. Mm. I tell you that um, justice is not expected to be done alone. Mm. It must be seen to be done. Look at what people are saying mm. on air. People are saying, we don't understand how uh, this country is going. Mm. We don't understand... Uh, the, the, the way this judgment is going. Mm -hmm. Somebody is saying, I agree with the judge position of the court mm -hmm. tribunal, but I don't agree with the court of appeal. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the ripple effects of mm -hmm. these things on the polity itself. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back to the legal profession. You see, in our, legal, in our profession, we work with what we call precedents. Mm -hmm. Precedents are decisions of the courts that relates to certain matters mm. now and precedents come from superior courts mm. from the court supreme court mm. down to the court of appeal and then to the high courts and the lower courts mm. and so now that you have you are having the same courts assuming like for example the court of appeal mm. deciding otherwise mm. over the same issues mm. or issues that are similar mm. the tendency is that it gives the other lower courts mm. the leverage of picking and choosing which decision they want to work with depending mm. on what purpose they want to achieve. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. And that is very bad for our profession. Mm. Our profession is supposed to have or to be, there's what we call consistency. Mm. That is the rule of the legal profession. Mm. Consistency. Mm. 
So that if you look at the nature of the facts of your case, and then you look at the other decisions that were taken, if the facts relate are the same, then you can be sure that this is the decision of the court. Mm. But these days, it does appear that that is not the way it, it goes. Mm. Because you find that uh, decisions are given over almost the same subject matter mm. and over the same set of facts and over the same, almost the same evidence mm. differently. Mm. But again, I must say that all eyes are on the Supreme Court. Mm. We are hoping mm. that there will be a unifying decision that will settle all these issues once and for all. Indeed, all eyes are now on. <laughs> it's more like at every stage, the <laughs> eyes are shifting. Yes. So now all eyes are actually uh, on the Supreme Court. But where, where do, you s do, you, do you see Governor Caleb Mutfang's um, victory actually affirmed by the uh, Supreme Court? I'm now, I want to get your own perspective now. Do you see the Supreme Court affirming his victory since we have established that these are pre-election matter. Yes, See, yes. these are not issues that should even get to the appeal court. The appeal court actually banked on it. Like, do you see Hello. the Supreme Court affirming okay, good. Okay. Mr. Caleb Mutu? Well, this is, this is a very Hello. difficult question for me. Hello. Because uh, you are putting me <laughs> in a position where I will be presiding mm. <laughs> as, a, as if I'm a <laughs> justice of the Supreme Court. No, I'm, I'm um, looking at based <laughs> on the the standing of the appeal court now you know like you said mm. it is cl the appeals court is actually um, the supreme court is clear yes. about yes. the grounds yes. uh, on which you can disqualify exactly. Exactly. it can it shouldn't be outside the electoral acts the provisions of the electoral yes. acts yes well well if if we are to go by precedent mm. and in my opinion mm. um i don't think I am. I, I believe that the decision of the Court of Appeal will be upturned. That's my position, and I stand. I stand to be corrected, and I can be wrong, uh, because uh, we know that the issue of nomination, and that is why I always say that when 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 the petitioners in the the most of the petitions in mm. Plateau State. When at, at, the, at the tribunal, mm. they were arguing nomination and sponsorship. Mm. But when they got to the Court of Appeal, they fell back on sponsorship. Mm. You know? But either ways, it is clear. Mm. These are issues that mm. should be left mm. for the High Court. Mm. These are pre-election matters mm. that should not be taken to the tribunals. Mm. So we're hoping that... Uh, the Supreme Court will stand by its existing position on mm. this issue, mm. and that uh, we are have going to have uh, this issue resolved in favor of the mm. election of Barrister Caleb Mutua. Mm. Thank you so much, Barrister Longji Zakari, for your analysis and perspective on National Talk. We really appreciate your time on the show. You're welcome. And to our viewers out there, thank you for staying with us on this special edition of National Talk. Do know that as matters keep arising, as, as issues unfold, we are going to be bringing lawyers from both APC and PDP to come and talk to us about the legal angle of the, the, the judgment of the appeal court. Do know that democracy is indeed the theory that the common people know what they want and deserve to get it real good and hard. Until I come your way next time, my name is Joyce Jakada.